Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to take a look at the new Cheval Temporal Science Spearhead. This is a Vulcan ship based off the Vulcan ship that was seen in Season 2 of Lower Decks, uh, and it will be going to the Infinity Promo Packs on June 7th on PC. For you console players out there, it'll probably be out four to six weeks later. So here's a picture of how it looks, and they have a nice little video here if you want to see some flyby shots of it uh it's your fairly standard vulcan design i feel you know you've got that the big ring around the center hole uh very similar to what we have with the dakir i think it is i'm probably mispronouncing it but that, that really old t5 vulcan ship uh you can basically consider this like an upgraded version of that i would say so i think it looks fairly solid if you're into the the vulcan aesthetics then I think you're going to be very happy to get the ship just for the skin alone. And thankfully, uh, the stats on it are actually fairly solid. So I'm going to stop the video here and let's take a look at that. So like the in here, they mentioned what I said, that this was shown in Season 2 of Lower Decks. And in that episode, it uh, had some really powerful shield like resistance or like shield capacity or something so i expect to see something similar with uh some of the abilities on this so this ship has a whole mod of 1.25 a shield mod of 1.5 uh i don't know what science ships usually sit at for shield mods but that does seem a, a bit higher than than average you've got a 4-3 weapon setup three device slots for your bridge officer seating you've got a lieutenant commander tactical an Ensign Engineering, a Lieutenant Science, Commander Science with Temporal Operative, and Lieutenant Commander Universal with Command. So with that Bridge Officer seating, I would say that this build is going to synergize very well for those of you that like the, the, like the Psy Torp builds. Uh, so like your Gravimetric Photons, your Particle Emission Plasma Torps. Uh, those of you doing that style of build are going to like this ship very much, I would uh, I would guess. And honestly, the bridge officer layout on it is fairly solid. Uh, you could probably do a fairly decent DPS number with this ship. I don't think it's necessarily going to be the, the, the best ship. Uh, I still think the, the existing platforms for DPS record chasing, like the sticks or tooth, are far superior to this. But for those of you looking to do that side tort play style, I think that this is a very very solid premium option but it is a promo ship so it's going to cost you one to two hundred bucks to get for a single character so keep that in mind console wise we have four tactical three engineering and four science it's, uh that's pretty decent turn rate of 7.5 impulse mod of 0.17 inertia of 40. it can equip dual cannons uh you do have a secondary to collector slot and all of the other science stuff that you would normally expect nothing crazy with the ability package here uh, but before i get into the the console or trait i do want to compare this to existing platforms that are comparable so i'm going to pull up this lovely spreadsheet by fleffel and the ship that i think most closely aligns to this uh Cheval Temporal Science Spearhead is the Legendary Glen. So I'm going to set this filter to show only it. With the Legendary Glen, this is a ship that you get with the 10th Anniversary Pack. Uh, you've got a Commander T Science with Temporal Operative, just like the Cheval. You've got a Lieutenant Commander Science with Command, which does differ slightly from what the Cheval has. The Cheval has the command on a Lieutenant Commander Universal. So with the, with the Cheval, you are getting a better Universal seat, which does give you more flexibility than the Glen. Uh, but I do think that the ships are fairly comparable. One other big difference that I would note is the Legendary Glen is a 4-2, whereas the Cheval is a 4-3. Uh, with regards to the weapon setup so i do want to compare i guess the the shield and hull mod is really not that different 
because the legendary Glen has a 1.45, this has a 1.5. The whole mod is a little bit better on the Cheval than the Glen, uh, but I think either ship is going to be fairly comparable. If you're looking to get a ship like the Cheval account wide, then grabbing the 10th anniversary bundle and getting the legendary Glen is, is the best route to go because the legendary Glen is, it's not as good, but it is extremely close to, to what this Cheval Temporal Science Spearhead is. So for the ship itself, I, I do think it is a very solid ship. Uh, you know, I, I think we see a lot of these cannon ships get dumped in and they just have the worst stats ever. But in this case, this is a good looking ship. That's a, you know, it's a good looking cannon ship. And it's actually got fairly solid stats. Like this, this is a ship that uh, I think I'm even going to go out and grab because it does look like it'd be fun to fly. And I think the, the stats alone are good enough that I could do something fairly well with it build wise. So let's move on to the the console here. The console is the regenerative shield amplifier. Let me zoom in on that. Um, so there's a passive on this console that will provide a passive bonus to shield subsystem power, starship shield restoration, and starship shield regeneration. Uh, so you've just got a lot of passives on it for boosting up shields. You know, the, this console is very much sticking to that shield boosting theme that I was talking about at the start of the video. And of course, as with any newer promo ship consoles, this can be used on any other ship you have. Um, so this console has a clicky on it that has a minimum range of 2.5 kilometers and a max range of 20 kilometers. And basically you hit a target or you, you select a target and then you hit the console and it will teleport you in front of that target. The five nearest allies to you will be untargetable and unkillable for two seconds. You will taunt up to five foes within 10 kilometers of you. And to yourself, you will be giving yourself a massive amount of shield boost. Uh, so what this console does really is it teleports you in front of a target and it makes you like take all of the heat from around the target. You're, you're taking all the threat temporarily at least and you're getting a massive shield boost. I don't know how effective this console is going to be from, you know, like obviously from a DPS standpoint, it doesn't do any damage, but what it does do from a damage standpoint is it is, it's a teleport and it's probably the best teleport we have in the game. Uh, I haven't looked at teleports in a while, but the fact that this can teleport you up to 20 kilometers away instantly is extremely powerful. Um, I think we're going to need to see just how much it taunts targets and all that to see if it's relevant for tanking at all. But there is a chance that this could be a fairly good tank console for someone doing more of a like a heavy style tank where you're going in, you're making your ship as beefy as possible. Uh, that type of tank might really like this console is what I'm thinking. And from a DPS standpoint, I think that teleport could actually end up being very useful in some scenarios. So I, I am interested to, to mess around with this console a little bit more. Star, for the starship trait, it is totally lost all control. While your ship is above 80% shield capacity and you activate a shield healing bridge officer ability or captain ability, you will be getting a boost for your weapons. And... The boost is fairly significant, so if you hit, like, Science Team while you're above 80% shield health, you will be getting plus 100% crit chance and 200% crit severity for your weapons for 4 seconds. However, it does have a 20 second lockout. And I do have to say, the numbers are fairly significant. You know, that that is nothing to, to sneeze at there. 100% crit chance, 200% 200% crit severity, that's pretty damn impressive. The issue is the uptime, and that's ultimately what kills this trait. The fact that it's only up for 4 seconds, and then has a 20 second recharge, 
or lockout, that that's really what kills it. Uh, so while the numbers on this are extremely impressive, it's not something that I foresee many people actually using. If the uptime was better, if it lasted, say, you know, I think a better compromise would be it lasts for 10 seconds, but then it has a like a 45 second uh, cooldown before you can use it again. I think then it would be in a much better position, but with it being up for just four seconds, it's really hard to justify this trait, and it's not one that I, as a DPS player, could see myself slotting. So, really to recap it all, because I know I've been talking a bit here, uh, the ship is fairly solid. This is probably the best Vulcan ship that we have in the game right now. Uh, it is, it's a fairly solid science ship. It can do Psy Torp. You could even do a standard Torp build on it if you wanted with Recursive Shearing 3. Um, you know, the ship, it's, the ship is solid. It, there's nothing else to really say about that. The console on it is very interesting. It's not going to add, you know, any damage directly. But it is the best teleport that we have in the game, it looks like. And you can use it to instantly move up to 20 kilometers away, which I think is something that could be very useful in certain combat scenarios. Uh, for a tank, I think the console could also be fairly interesting for, for like the heavy style tank like I had talked about. Um, I think that the if you're going into like the center of a hive elite, for example, that maybe this console could be interesting to help you stay alive a bit better though i think uh, we're already at a point power creep wise with survivability that you don't really need that but that is something that could help in that type of scenario and the starship trait it does provide a very large boost but it's just it's limited by its uptime uh i would like to see cryptic you know change this to something like i just talked about 10 seconds uptime Every 45 seconds, I think, would be fair and comparable to other things that we have. Uh, but in its current state, like what we see here, I can't recommend that you go out and get the ship for the trait. If you're a fan of Vulcan ships, I highly, you know, I, I think this ship is something you're going to be really interested in. And if that's what you're into, then I highly recommend the ship. Uh, I can't recommend it based off the console or trait though i think the console has some scenarios where it'll be useful but there that is going to be very niche overall you know i'm fairly impressed with the ship we've had some recent promo ships that were not not that great like the section 31 intel dreadnought i criticized quite heavily because i still think it was just really not that good of a ship uh the kirk i I also think that wasn't too great of a ship. Uh, but, you know, this ship, I'm actually, uh, I'm impressed by this. I think it's a very solid ship. And I think for those of you that have been waiting for a Vulcan ship to be added to the game, that is that has fairly good stats. Uh, I think this is it. That's going to be it for today's video. Once again, thank you all to all channel members. Your help is always very much appreciated. Uh, next video will be out tomorrow, and that will be the best of tanking platforms video. So make sure to stop by and check that out. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.